Evolution, it's fake. I hate to break it to you. I hate to burst the bubble. It's not real. These drawings, Ernest Hegel, these were cited for over a hundred years. He exaggerated the drawings to fit his thesis. This is what people do. You reinterpret the evidence, you exaggerate things to fit your presuppositions. And so he wanted the vertebrates to have a common ancestor. So he tried to make it a reality. Just like the Nebraska man, another fraudulent case in the Piltdown man. And the problem is, is that these Darwinists, these people who believe in evolution, want everyone to believe in it. You know, I was on r slash atheism, you know, where all the intellectuals go. And a nihilist and a Satanist are complaining about Christian schools and how they don't teach evolution. You know, I'm a nihilist and there's no truth, but it's it's wrong that they teach creation. That's just that's just insane. That's indoctrination. It's child abuse. Meanwhile, they'll say this. I mean, seriously. Oh, we're, we're just uh, ironically. Come on. You're literally saying stuff like that. And they want to ban homeschooling so they can force evolution. Well, evolution is fake. And here's exactly why. And let me clarify, what did Darwin observe? He observed adaptations in animals determined by natural selection, just luck, randomness, mutations. This is scientific. This is verifiable. This is microevolution. This is small picture variance adaptations within a species. You know, seeing the bird have a different beak, it has a survival advantage, even though it's just random, it helps it survive. I understand that. It's just completely random. Now, I don't dispute this, but the point of contention is the big picture, macro evolution, the grand metaphysical narrative that entirely new species can emerge. This is a grand light years leap from that these micro level adaptations. Oh, if you just give it en enough time, it could explain the origins of life macro evolution and obvi obviously everyone agrees look at the science it's widely accepted it's been fact checked don't be a science denier well i was indoctrinated to believe this i was never exposed to anything other than darwin's theory of evolution in my public school and in a free society we should hear about other perspectives like creationism i wish i was exposed to creationism the mindset of these reddit atheists is dangerous they want to make evolution teaching mandatory everywhere even in christian schools even banning homeschools and the same people saying that that it's child abuse lack of critical thinking and poorly educated if you just teach creation when they're literally trying to indoctrinate everyone they indoctrinated me this is the most unquestioned and dominant theory of our time there are major flaws in macroevolutionary theory which caused me to doubt it and why i'm an evolutionary agnostic darwinism requires a huge assumption you need a lot of time, you know? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah, just millions, billions of years. I don't know, they change it all the time. But history, as someone who is skeptical, I, I have no idea how old the earth is. Darwinism depends on countless unjustified assumptions in order to work. Carbon dating extrapolates a phenomenon that we've only known for a hundred years and it applies it over billions of years. Just assume that time, matter, physics has always functioned in the same exact way that we experience it. What's his justification for this? Well, well, it's always been that way. Given this is uncertainty of trusting these methods, we can look to other disciplines like social science of history. The earliest recorded documents are around 3,000 to 6,000 years old. We all know that humanity is at least 6,000 years old. Anything more than that cannot be proven with absolute certainty. And carbon dating is often cited to say, oh, the earth is really old. Now, this is a great article showing that we need to be very careful when we extrapolate the data beyond where we have measured it. In these examples, he came to the wrong conclusion because he extrapolated the data beyond the limit justified by the data. We should only extrapolate the data when the range over which the extrapolation occurs in a small compared to the range over which the data are measured. In models, they become less accurate the further out we project them. If we project something 10, 100 years, in the future or the past, it becomes less accurate. Now, if we do this over a billion years, this is it's gonna be insanely inaccurate. Some people have come to the conclusion that the earth is billions of years old because they are basing it on the techniques that use radioactive processes. But we have only been studying radioactivity for about 100 years. So in order to use radioactivity to come to this conclusion that the earth is billions of years old, you have to assume for billions of years, radioactive processes have behaved in exactly the same way we have observed them from the past 100 years. That is a huge unjustified assumption. You know, things evolve and trends change, but 
this constant has been the same for billions of years. What is your justification for that belief? Because it's always been that way. If you are a skeptic, why would you put your faith in Darwinism? That carbon dating is accurate, that time, physics, biology, it's just always functioned in the same exact way that it does now. Darwinism has thousands of other flaws that I'm going to co cover, but even if it doesn't even have time, then it is 100% impossible. If justified true belief is a goal, we should look at other disciplines like history that have more certainty. We can only know so much by sitting around and looking at a crime scene. We need to ask for the story of what happened. We know that the earth is at least 6,000 years old. So that is the safest position. The other problem is a blind appeal to scientific authority. Oh, well, we all just know. Well, in 1859, what is the full title of Darwin's book? Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, Preservation of the Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Darwin, you know, he isn't just some independent, you know, person looking for the truth. He actually plagiarized the theory of evolution. And he is from a certain time period. He's English, the Royal Society. The British Imperium up with a theory that just so happens to fit the narrative, the power structure of the time, the mythology of the last 300 years of the British and American Empire, you know, world domination because of it, obviously because of the Anglo-Saxon just evolved on top and it's just the most fit and others like Thomas Huxley, all these people, these aren't just independent people. They are part of societies and they, it fits their mythology. And they ignore those. And it's naive to think this mythical e ethos is just a neutral theory discovered in a vacuum. I mean, if you want to believe the mythology of the British Empire, go ahead. That's a fairy tale. There's also other instances of science just being completely wrong about the static universe. The universe has always existed. Bloodletting, geocentrism, cigarettes, drinking mercury. Oh, they're good for your health. If you're just blindly appealing to scientific authority, you're going to come with the wrong conclusions. And the ramifications of Darwinism is the eugenics movement, improving the human race. If we're just a cosmic accident and all there is is survival, there is no inherent value to human life. There is no morality in evolution. There is only survival or the fittest or the luckiest. So no undesirables. We're going to get rid of undesirable traits. Survival is not good or bad. That were, That's a value judgment. And that requires objective truth, objective morality. But morality is just subjective. You can't get morality from Darwinism. It's just a social construct. And if it's just a social construct, then it really is just arbitrary. It really doesn't matter. It's just your personal opinion. We see Darwinist ethics thrive right after his theory. There's only survival. You know, you may feel oppression, slavery, militarism, patriarchy, racism, capitalism, justice. They're bad. That's just your opinion. It's not, there's nothing objectively wrong with anything because that requires objective standards. That requires God. Survival is happening, but you can't get an ought from it is. You can't get morality from Darwinism. So what comes next? You know, in 1930, you get Nazism, social Darwinism, tribalism, scientific racism, genocide. You know, if you were appealing to authority during this time period, well, look at it. It's just a science. Look at the, the Aryan race just uh, evolved on top. Just look at it. It's a science. Don't be a science denier. This is what's wrong with just blindly appealing to scientific authority. When you remove God, there is only race or class. It's your tribe versus the other. Morality ends up being dictated by those in power of it's just a social construct. All that has been revised and labeled pseudoscience. Oh, you know, all that past stuff, that's just pseudoscience. Um, the power structures and their rulers have always interfered to decide what is science and what science is acceptable. They do not tolerate dissent. Even today, this happens. And in Nazi Germany, the Catholic Church, they don't like dissent. All power structures have these authoritarian tendencies, including the current power structures. Science against the uh, establishment narrative is labeled pseudoscientific archaeology. This is labeled as pseudoscience. Oh, he, he's not real science, but it's just showing there's alternative opinions in their you know, power structures. They're going to filter their, you know, debunking Darwin, Darwinism would be a major blow and discredit the current power structure. So what they're going to do is they're going to label things pseudoscientific if it doesn't fit their narrative. It's naive to think that our society is immune to this. Remove confirmation bias by having peer review. But who peer reviews the peer review? And actually, this Stanford professor found that most published research findings are false. This was a groundbreaking study in the field of meta science. A large number, if not the majority of published medical research paper contains results that cannot be replicated. 
This is why we need to ask the paradigm level questions, the pre-scientific questions, the meta level questions, and evolutionary psychology using it as a grand theory to explain everything. Well, Michael Shermer says, oh, we just evolved to be religious. Uh, you know, this invisible, you know, agency, it helped us to survive. And we just constructed it. That's why there's many religions. You know, people have different ideas, therefore no ideas are true. And evolution explains morality, but there's so many contradictions. So evolution helped us survive. Then why would we get rid of it? If evolution is the only explanation for morality, then it's just arbitrary. It's not really rooted in anything. There isn't nothing inherently wrong with child sacrifice or murder or genocide or slavery. You cannot get an ought from an is. Shermer, he claims to be skeptical. He can't even give a justification for logic. Please just answer the problem of induction that Hume raised. And we evolve to believe untrue things. And why do you trust your own brain? We ev evolve to be religious, but it's untrue. He trusts his brain, these blind chemical processes, even though we evolved to believe untrue things, he contradicts himself. You can't get morality from science just drawing these artificial lines in the sand, something like abortion. Science can say a heartbeat is happening and feeling pain, but science cannot give value to human life. You know, it's just a social construct. Oh, well, six week abortion, eight week abortion, 26 week post sport. It's all just arbitrary. You're just drawing lines in the sand unless it's rooted in something objective the true objective morality. Humans have dignity because they are made in the image and likeness of God from conception. Otherwise, you're just drawing these random lines. And it has been weaponized. It was weaponized during the time of Darwin for eugenics, Nazism, social Darwinism. But now it's been revised and adapted. That's all pseudoscience now. And now to fit the needs of the current elite, the global universalist capitalist. Oh, you're just a cosmic accident. You're just a monkey. You're a worker. You're a consumer. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. You know, and it leads to atheism, nihilism, degeneracy, and nothing wrong with mass depopulation and birth control and abortion because human life has no inherent value. You need to sterilize yourself to stop climate change if you actually care about the, I mean, the, ne the next ice age. I mean, global warming. I mean, just eat the soy and bugs and just consume. And the leftists will criticize the power structure. But then they'll just, you know, 100% agree with the social agenda. This completely assimilated. And there's the mathematical challenges to Darwin's theory. There's no reason to doubt that Darwin su successfully explained the small adjustments by which an organism adapts to local circumstances, changes to fur density or wing style or beak shape. Yet there are many reasons to doubt whether he can explain the big picture, not the fine tuning of existing species, but the emergence of new ones. The probability to get a human being from nothing, even the probability to get a cell, to get DNA, to get anything from nothing. That is beyond impossible. Human existence, one in a trillion trillion. But I'm the one who's crazy, I'm insane, I believe in fairy tales. You, you know, you don't believe in miracles, but one in trillion trillion, you know, that's just, that just makes sense. Have we ever seen a new species emerge from nothing? No, no, it takes time. But as I've shown, we only know that humanity is only at least 6,000 years old. To show how crazy this is, universe big, time long, therefore, eventually COVID-19 could turn into Nick Cage. If time is unlimited, then eventually there could be COVID-19 and Nick Cage. It could just, it could just happen. It could just evolve. If time is infinite, then everything will happen, including it could evolve to be that evolution could not be the case. And then the lack of evidence in the fossil record. You know, related species are separated by profound gaps. You know, no, there's no forms that indicate any possible connection between the orders of fish, reptiles, birds. There's not a continuous lines. We see jumps. In other words, whole categories of animals appear all at once. That's why they have to come up with a fraud, with a Nebraska man, with the Hegel's drawings, with the Pildon man. The gaps we would expect to see millions of fossils of transitional species but we don't and that's the problem problem is is that darwinists are committed to their paradigm when there is no evidence they make up the evidence when there's contrary evidence they reinterpret to fit their paradigm because they are committed to darwinism religious adherence to it literally Many of them have even given up on trying to prove the fossil records because it's hopeless and now the comments and response is oh we don't even need that we just have dna we don't need the fossil record because dna proves evolution the common ancestor well, how does this make any sense? How do you get DNA in the first place? You have to think that it just spontaneously in a chaotic soup was simmering in primordial earth and eventually these uh, nucleotides bonded together to form RNA. 
How does this make any sense? Oh, this is just so much more rational. They say things like this. Common ancestor, which might have been something like bacteria. We know the process by which that came about. We don't know the details, but we understand essentially how it came about. There are still gaps in our understanding. We don't understand how the cosmos came into existence in the first place, but we're working on that. You can be like Darwinism, you know, you can have faith in scientism, but I thought skepticism was the goal. And so you're going to believe this, that this primordial soup, this randomness, you're going to assume all these things about the universe and then just also claim to be a skeptic. You're holding a belief without sufficient evidence for its confirmation. It's not based in reality. This is why it had to be propped up on fraud, logical fallacies and blind faith and Darwinist. And most Darwinists claim to be skeptics. How does a Darwinist account for logic, the uniformity of nature, the past? Why do these exist? Oh, just cause. The problem of induction, they can't answer it. And the countless other contradictions. Second, law of thermodynamics. Things will get more disordered over how we went from nothing to a complex human being. How do you explain the Cambrian explosion, the origin of DNA, the complexity of the cell, the lack of transitional species? I can make another long video about the countless fundamental flaws in Darwinism. But how can any skeptical person also claim to believe in macroevolution? And that's when we need to start looking at alternative paradigms. So we all agree that the universe was created at some point. So we all are technically creationists. Now, at the exact point, we don't know. You know, even a Darwinist, at some point there was creation. There was nothing. And then there was something. A Darwinist may say the Big Bang. A Christian may say creation started in Genesis. We haven't seen new species evolve from nothing. We have seen adaptation in species variants. So the only skeptical position is that life has always existed how we see it because that is known. But we have had micro level adaptations. Given these factors, I am justified in being skeptical. We know humanity is at least 6,000 years old. Anything else is just a, a guess. It's just huge speculation because you have so many assumptions about the universe that aren't just. We know it is mathematically impossible. Complex life to evolve from nothing. We know the universe had some starting point. We know it was not static. Einstein used to believe it was a static universe. It was created. We are all creationists. We know Darwinism has and is being weaponized against the population. It was the mythology of the British Empire. It's used to demoralize the population. You're just a monkey man. We know Darwinism can't justify its assumptions. How can a Darwinist justify the past, the uniformity of nature? Christianity can give an account for the uniformity of nature, identity over time, ethics, logic, math, physics, creation, first mover, origin of humanity. Therefore, the most logical position the most skeptical position is young earth creationism. It's not that crazy. Young earth, we know that humanity is at least 6,000 years old. You can speculate, but you have all these unjustified assumptions. So the skeptical position is 6,000 years old, hence young earth. Now creationism, everyone's a creationist. We all believe in creation. The Darwinist believes that the universe had a beginning, the Big Bang. We just have different points and different ways of explaining how we're creationists. But it is shown to be the case that evolution is not the case. And this is to contrast the ancient earth that has all these assumptions that are unjustified and evolution, which cannot be proven, which is not scientific. Macroevolution, there is not proof. And that's why they have to have fraud. They have to have all these logical fallacies and it has to be propped up by the power structures. Darwinism is not science. It is a whole metaphysical grand narrative that has been propped up and given as an alternative worldview to contrast and discredit the Christian worldview. This is used so often to discredit Christians. And even when I wasn't a Christian, the first time I heard someone, I'm like, critique Darwinism. I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. I think we can all agree that mindset of the Reddit atheists from the start of the video is dangerous. You know, trying to get rid of homeschooling and, you know, force evolution on everyone. Macroevolution is not science. It's not a testable scientific theory. It's really just a metaphysical research program that arose out of the ethos of the British Empire and has directly led to horrific things that are objectively bad, like eugenics, Nazism, tribalism. It's anti-intellectual, it's anti-human, and it's anti-Christian. I don't know how any skeptical person could actually believe 
in evolution. You can believe the Darwinist religion and think you are a monkey man, but we are all made in the image and likeness of God. We all have an inherent dignity and purpose. Sadly, many of the youth nowadays are indoctrinated in public school to become Darwinian atheists. And through the grace of God, I saw the devastating flaws. I realize Darwinists can't justify their assumptions. They rely on way more assumptions than a Christian and they contradict themselves. Like Mike Shermer, he contradicts himself all the time. I grew up watching Bill Maher, watching his documentary, you know, Amazing Atheist, Family Guy. Oh yeah, you know, if we just got rid of religion, you know, Darwinism and atheism, they're not fulfilling. They lead to nihilism. They lead to spiritual suicide. No atheistic worldview can answer the problem of induction. A world free from religion is not a utopia. It's a world where there is no meaning. Everything's a social construct. People don't know what a woman is. You know, I remember the first time I heard a good critique of evolution and someone was like, does it even matter for our daily lives if we evolve from monkeys, if we came from aliens, if we live in a hollow earth? It doesn't matter. What does matter is if we live in a moral and virtuous society and we can only achieve that through living for Christ. And it's not just, oh, do does it matter? I don't know how any skeptical person could believe in Darwinian macroevolution because you have so many unjustified assumptions. Thank you. God bless.